Yeah, hey people, welcome to another small installment. Um, today we will just directly dive into. Um, we will use some Rust in combination with WebAssembly. For that reason, I have not set up anything. So I just typed into Google install Rust and you totally land on that page directly. Uh, then just start, start the installer or download the version you need. I mean, it will show you which version you will need, but otherwise you can just uh, hit up curl and use that. On my side, I just uh, downloaded uh, the Rust up in it and I will now install it. Yeah, here you can just say simply install that what, what I will do, I don't have any customizations to do as and while it's installing, I will just uh, dive a bit deeper into WebAssembly. I just typed WebAssembly and Rust into Google and land on that page. I already read a bit in the Rust book and I totally can recommend it. So I will just go into read the book and it you will directly land at the installation guide, but we will just uh, directly jump into the setup and check what we need because I also need to install Cargo and Cargo Generate, I really don't know why I need this. I did install it yesterday or NPM. That's really weird because I didn't need either one of these, but we'll see in a bit when the setup has finished. Let's just have a look. Yeah, it's just working. My internet connection is like really slow. Two thousand years later. So the setup has uh, done its job, but we got an error. This error is seemingly due to OpenSSL, and, and I think there is some problem with the um, with some environment variables. I had that problem too yesterday, and I don't really don't want to. Um, dive deeper into it. So I'm just using no, oh, it's really hinting me in that direction. That's bad. Okay, now it starts to install. And the funny part about it, my PC is really slow, as you can see on my laptop, actually it was way faster. So you totally need some energy. And now as I'm recording, it doesn't make it that better. So <laughs> it will take a bit of time and we'll see again in a bit. One eternity later. So now we are basically done with the setup. So now it's just asking me to press enter and continue and it uh, tells you that you should restart your uh, console just to unload the active path variable as the environment has uh, been set new. Um, now let's directly dive into the installing guide. I really need to look how to install the whole toolchain for us. But yeah, first we will get wasm pack and let's just go in there it says yeah we can curl it or we can use the wasm pack in it exe or hit up my terminal and just use like um cargo install as it should be installed with rust um so i use cargo install wasm pack and it should totally update everything um it may be possible that I don't want to install the default features um, because it may crash as not all sources are there or some environment variables on set. Later in the void. So now we start the interesting part after installing all the dependencies. I've switched my to my laptop as it's a little bit faster, like 10 times faster. So yeah, I just switched the machines. So some things will be different, but the installing process is basically the same. I did that on that machine too like uh, before um, recording the installing on the other system so that you could just could see it on a fresh system. So now we'll use wasmpack to create a new project. I will call it wasmtest and now it's just being created. So I will CD into it like that and just start code, I guess. And there we are with our files. It has generated some boilerplate stuff for us. The most interesting right now being the cargo tommel, which is all the dependencies and the configurations. Um, there are some features in it and we basically just need CDYLib um, 
it's query type. And on the other very important thing is wasn't bind again. It basically is like the glue for us between Rust and WebAssembly. So it will just, uh, we will tell them which function functions we want to import from JavaScript from the Rust perspective and export to JavaScript. We will see that like here, uh, there's also pre-generated some uh, gen general functions which show you both cases. What I told before, like the import from JavaScript, JavaScript we put a macro be of up front it, and then in the extern block, you can just put all the functions you want to use in Rust, basically. Wasn't bind again, is then uh, just gluing it together and making the function available to, to you. Due to the strict uh, type system, we need to annotate that in that function, which I find is a great add-on, even though. So let's just rename the, what we basically do now is renaming the alert function. And I will just say text still, and just put the text in here. So it's just a wrapper around the alert function, which is kind of dumb, but let's just do that. Out that you see how it's, how it's working. Let's now add uh, another function to have some more parameters that make a multiplication like M1 and okay, we need to give it a type, but it's a um, integer multiplication and M2. Um, and it will return I32. And now we just do MI times M2. We don't do that. If we do that, we get a error marking because he's finding no return type, basically unit, because this is actually a statement. And if we leave that off, it's an expression, but we can also do that. And then we return the statement. This is possible. But if we do that, we are just having a statement. So now we have built our functions and we need to build all the stuff we want to have. We could just trigger wasn't pack build and some JS is generated, but then we need to load the WebAssembly <coughs> uh, file, so the WASM file and all the stuff we need to manually. We don't want to do that, and therefore we say target web. And on the other hand, the brothers aren't standardized, so it's fine, it's very, really great and to have like a pumped up uh, JS file, which will just make it easy for us to initialize the whole WebAssembly file we will generate. We will see that in a bit. You see it's compiling a lot of stuff and just now building. It will take a bit, little bit of time, but on the second run, it will be like in a web. So let's let him just build and optimize. It, it will take a bit, as I said, and now we already have the package generated. I will go over that right now a little bit. Um, in here, we can see that uh, the file is basically manually loaded into the um, memory. In in the end, it's bound to the to the WebAssembly. Via the WebAssembly class, it's now bound to the browser and told to JavaScript. Basically, this is a manual loading of the whole thing. This is generally nothing more than the import, but it's done over the memory somewhat. I really can't work that out right now. I would need to read it and stuff, but I don't really care how it's allocating uh, areas and so on and so forth. But um, in that area, he's instantiating that and it's streamed into the web assembly and then it's instantiated. And we now just need to call this function and then we have access to all the other ones. So let's do it really quick and create an index HTML that will just do a simple thing having a script with a type module. And now we just import the init, init. And additionally, our greet and my function from, it's called slash pkg wasm test js. And now we can just call asynchronously the init. And we need to await it because otherwise the wasm wouldn't be loaded at that moment if we would uh, leave out the await. The promise wouldn't be 
uh, would be still pending and therefore nothing would be loaded and uh, both functions wouldn't be avail available. We would just have greet mul is not defined on, on wasm or so. I mean, if we go into the function, we see that um, right up here, we see there is a, basically a wasm object created and it will somewhat tell that if you, we now call whoop, whoop, greet, um, that wasm.greet is not a function. This would basically happen. So let's go back in our file and just call the greet function and say, hey, hey wasm. And right now we need to start a server. Now let's open the live server. It is loaded and I may have Why is it ambiguous? So I just need to have a look what I did there. We have greed, but mal is missing. Okay, let's go with the flow and just um, start greed right now. And we see it's saying, hey, wasm. So I think, yeah, I haven't told Bindgen that we want to have that available in JavaScript. Um, foolish error, basically. But yeah, I'm also new to this. So sorry for the error, but maybe I did it on purpose to show you how fast the build really works. Because when I do that right now, it's done in a whip. And now we can just use the mal in here as it will be available in here. Um, there, you can see it. And additionally, you have uh, some type annotations. I didn't, I, I really like it that they were passed too. And another thing I want to show you, which I find really cool, we can just uh, write like a multi-line comment, like our function or oh, multiply plus to integers, then m1 and m2. And if we now rebuild it, we will see, let's refresh it, that our text isn't there. I really don't know why. Last, ah, okay, I know why. Because we need to tell him that we want to have it in our, uh, in our code. <clears throat> and now it's included. Easy as that, I think. I, I love that feature, actually. So. Let's now use the mal function. So importing it. And then we can now just say mal. Um, let's say 23 times two. So it should show us uh, nothing because we need to get that value, that result. And we will read that result basically because we can. But it, now I don't really know if we, we will get an error because I mean, we are in JavaScript, but how will wasm take it? There's a type error, I think. Index out of bounds. That is interesting. So we may need to call... I'm not really sure, to be honest, what... Do we... Yeah, we do have. So let's take res and just say to string. Because I'm really cu curious right now. That's really a problem. So you need to program type safe. That's like super interesting to me as I didn't know that. But yeah, that is, yeah. And so people, I hope I could uh, give you a short overview of Wasm with Rust and how easy it is to just get hooked up, hooked up a new project and get right on the floor and get to run everything in a really smooth manner. That's it from my side. So. Please subscribe if, if you liked the video and write comments for feedback. I would love that. Have a good time and see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.